In this video, we're going to look at oxidizing acetone using copper, copper metal. Some information about this reaction, it is extremely exothermic. Copper tends to glow red at around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit or 1093 degrees Celsius. The reaction is so hot that once you heat this with fire, the copper, the reaction will keep it glowing close to this temperature without adding any more fire. The reaction is as follows. This is acetone, the CH3COCH3, plus the oxygen in the air yields 2CH3CHO, which is something called ethanol. It's not ethanol. Two carbon dioxide and two waters. And just out of interest, ethanol can also be called acetaldehyde, and it's used for things like making acetic acid. It's used in some perfumes, and it's used in some pharmaceuticals. Because the catalyst is actually copper metal, it's of course solid, it does not get used up in this reaction at all, which is really the definition of a catalyst. For the reason this reaction works well is because acetone has a very low vapor pressure so that when you pour it out, it will evaporate very quickly. Materials that we need are a beaker. I'm gonna use a 250 milliliter beaker. We need some acetone, 50 to 100 milliliters. We need some copper wire, of course. We need a stick or a rod and a torch something to heat up the copper with. For our methods, we're gonna take our straight copper wire, or close to straight, and we're gonna create a coil at the bottom by bending it, and then create a hook at the top. Then we're gonna have a beaker over here with acetone in it. And what we're gonna do is create a hook on the top of this coil here, it's all one piece of wire, such that when it hangs on the rod or stick we have up here, the coil is hanging just above the acetone. And then when it's heated, red hot, it will set right there where the low vapor pressure of acetone will come up naturally and react creating these products up here but also because that reaction is so exothermic this will remain red hot bore you any more with information let's go do it to start this experiment we need some copper wire here and i'm just going to measure what i have here so you know that's 1.4 1.4 also so 1.4 millimeter wire you can use thinner i've done this it actually will melt the um or break apart the copper after a while so that the end falls off when you heat it and it landed on my table and you can see in the corner here a uh, circle a little bit well that's where it landed so be careful because copper will break if it's heated too much the idea is to make a coil of wire here i got this copper wire off of an electronic coil and um it was wrapped tightly so it's not really in great shape it's bent funny ways i straightened it the best i could but it's perfect for this experiment and i'm not going to bore you with this completely here i'll be back when i'm done making this coil so i'm done with the coil it looks a little funky because i heated it just to make sure it wouldn't break when i was done and i think what i did the first time was just heat it too long and once it gets red hot you're done then you can start using it in the experiment so here's my 250 milliliter beaker and I want this to hang just above the acetone. So if I hold this up to the side here, and I had pre-checked this uh, before I, I did this, I'm gonna put in 50 milliliters, 25 to 50 milliliters of acetone. And I know this will hang just above it then. If it touches the acetone, it is possible to light it on fire. No harm done really, but it, it will kind of ruin the experiment. So here, I've placed a stick across there, of course, and taped it in place so it doesn't roll about. And we're gonna heat the copper here. There's the coil we made. All right, it's getting red hot. You can see it's still glowing. It should have gone out by now. We're going to turn the lights off. There we go. It's so bright, it's hard to believe that uh, it's being heated by its own uh, action. The oxidation of the acetone is so exothermic.
And just to prove the acetone's doing that, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I'll take out the uh, copper wire here and the coil. And you can see how quickly it diminishes. Any pre-1983 penny is made of solid copper. Here's our 1974 penny with a copper wire up to it, obviously. I'm gonna heat it now. Hopefully we don't burn through our stick. Red hot. You're kidding me.